uh, Mike, with the struggles on the road, have you been able to define any specific theme, or has it just a, been a variety of things, and, and at this point you need to just go find a way to win on the road? I think if we need to find a way to win on the road, we've uh, you know played a close game in New Orleans, had too many turnovers, uh, didn't didn't play or coach well enough in Cleveland, and we can go all the way down the road. I mean, it's been some some good things and some productive plays that we've had. Again, it's just the the consistency and the overall uh, execution that you have to have uh, to be able to win on the road um, in some of those situations. In regards to your decision. Are you able to pull anything from your previous experience with the Brady situation? Obviously, it's different, but can you pull anything from that from this situation? Um, you know, I would say that whoever the quarterback is, you know, going uh, against this defense is, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll have to be ready no matter who is out there playing. Will <clears throat> Ryan Malik? You know, the scheme that we've seen from these guys is, you know, disguises and they do a fantastic job. So, again, we've, um, we're going to prepare all those guys as starters. Will's going to be the starting quarterback. And, you know, it's just about making sure that we're doing everything now to prepare, uh, to take care of the football, to execute, to, to try to get some X plays. It's hard to continue to drive it um, and stay in third manageable. And then, you know, they've been really, really good in the red zone. You know, we'll just we'll see kind of where where things are here today. I think that that's a that's a valid question, um, but just seeing where the 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 reps are divided up and you know how how ultimately Ryan feels and and you know try to get both of them some work. How was Will maybe handle the stage, the coaching points when you when coach just kind of pointed out things he could do? Hopefully, like every other player, um, acknowledge it, and you know you, you can be frustrated, and you know, but but you don't have a whole lot of time. You know, I think it, it's maybe a different conversation. Maybe uh, on the field is one thing, and then you know, in the meeting room, it's like, okay, why? You know, we we try to ask a lot of questions, like what what each player saw, what were they um, processing. So that we can, you know, hopefully correct and, and fix mistakes. If a player can tell you exactly what he did wrong, you don't have a whole lot to coach. It was just a mistake, and you know, you move on. So I think that he's, you know, been good in that regard. As you go through that process, how much do you have to weigh in just the patience, understanding that he's still a developing player? You know, we have patience for for a lot of things and then the, the mistakes that happen over and over the the repeated mistakes you probably have less patience and that would be the same at every position um again a, val a valid question something that will work through um you know it just gets difficult you know, trying to get other other guys up on the, on the game day roster, uh, special teams plays a part in that. So, um, you know, we'll look and see how things go throughout the week. What are some of the things that Ryan's meant to this team in four years that maybe we don't see behind the scenes? Um, you know, we got a good group of, of veteran leaders here. We'll, we'll need them all to, uh, you know, to, to keep, you know, moving ahead and, and again, find a way to, to win on the road. That's where our focus is. It's, it's not about anything else. It's not about, you know, you know we're, we're not even halfway. We're, we're at halfway point. We, we got a great opportunity here to, to figure out how to start closing the gap and see if we can't get back in the race. What's working for Baker Mayfield down there, really protecting the ball well this year, been pretty efficient? Uh, yeah, I mean, the play action game has been impressive. Their ability to, to mix different protections with that play action pass game, uh, mix different concepts, the, the shots, uh, the two man concepts, the overs. Um, so that, that's been something that's been, been impressive. Um, he's been able to avoid uh, pressure in the pocket when it has been there. He's been able to, to keep the play alive, to either scramble uh, to, for a first down or be able to, to extend the play and, and, and throw. So, you know. 
that's the thing. It's um, when there has been some pressure, which row line has done a nice job, uh, only allowing 13 sacks. Uh, Baker does a great job of ducking underneath guys or kind of slipping out of there. So give him a lot of credit for that. And, uh, you know, they've protected well. When Jeff has doubled, you're expecting guys who are single to win. What are you looking for Jeff to do against the double? Well, it would be uh, the, the same for, for any player that's, that's doubled, uh, which would be to, you know, if you're talking about an interior rusher, um, you know, balance the rush, you know, get into the, to the middle of the pocket. Um, and, and then there's ways, you know, as, as they slide to you, trying to get on the center, you know, push the center, uh, be, you know, stay alive. You know, the play's not over just because they, they've put two guys on you, whether that's in the run game, uh, or, or the pass game, sometimes the, the, they leave, sometimes they stay there. But, um, you know, try, just try to, you know, compete, split, you know, get in on the center if you're talking about an interior player that's uh, pass rushing. Like we ask you a lot about when things are going wrong. I'm just curious, as you look at this team through eight games, what are you most proud of? What do you feel like is going well for this team? Well, there's still, you know, that's, I, I do think that, you know, I, I hate to say that we compete our ass off, Gentry, but other than the clunker, you know, in Cleveland, I, I do think that we sit in there and, you know, we, we compete. We compete our asses off. And, you know, again, that's, that doesn't make up for, for winning. We know what the ultimate goal is. Um, but we've had guys that have taken advantage of some opportunities. Um, you know, whoever it's been out there, um, and I think it, if we looked at the last time we talked at the bye week, there's a lot of things that we've done that will you know, help us win. We just have to eliminate the things uh, and maybe do some things better that, that's going to help us do a little bit more consistently. You know, at times we've run the football. You know, we, we've hit some X plays in the, in the passing game. Um, we, we have had some 20-yard gains, which have been good. Um, you know, early in the season, you know, stopping a run, getting off the field on third down, you know. And so I just think that, uh, you know, you, you have to just do it consist. Every week is, is, is a new challenge. And that's what I try to, you know, impress upon these guys. Kyle Phillips has had a couple of productive games the last few weeks. Has he maybe been a little more relaxed, a little more focused in that regard since you took him off the front turn? You'd have to ask Kyle. I, I'm not sure about his um, relaxation. Maybe it's just getting back in there, been been away, you know, uh, for a few weeks. And you know, he certainly, um, you know, helped us out the other night. And we'll need that on whether that's third down or you know, his first and second down package or in two minutes. Outside of Peter, Will, Roger. Peter, Will, Roger. Who's shown you steady improvement over the first half of the season? Uh, I'm, just, I'm going to hold on the, the mid-season report card. I'm focused on Tampa. Do you feel like you've gotten steady improvement from enough guys on this team in the first half of the season? Again, I'm going to save the mid-season report card and, and focus on Tampa and, and try to get everybody ready. And you know, we'll, we'll need everybody to continue to improve. I think that, that is a, that's a great point that you're making, Paul, that we're going to need everybody to continue to improve as the season goes on and, you know, and make a push here, try to get back into it. Um, no, other than that he won't practice today, that, that he won't practice. And, you know, uh, I would say that he'd be doubtful right now for the game. Is there anyone who's stepped up in particular in the secondary from a leadership standpoint since the buyer trade? Well, I mean, I thought Amani's always done that here the last couple of years. He's built a lot of confidence uh, just in his self, um, you know, and, and uh, you know, tried to provide that kind of leadership. And, and again, you know, SMB's played football, Christian Fulton, and, you know, again, it hasn't all, all been all bad. And I think that that's the, you know, we've had some plays that we'd like to have back, uh, certainly. But, uh, you know, when, when Roger's in there, Roger doesn't say a whole lot, but the way he plays, he plays with great competitiveness and toughness. And, you know, when he was playing inside, he, you know, made some plays, factored, we blitzed him, he showed up in a run, is very active. So, 
you know, as long as you, you know, there's a lot of different ways to lead, you know, make sure that you're prepared, you know what to do, you play hard, and that's a great way to start. And then if you're, there's a vocal element to it, um, you know, that, that can help as well. How big a challenge is there with receiving core, especially Evans with this, this size? Well, it's a great combination of size and speed, and, uh, you know, he's run a lot of routes in his, in his career. He's seen a lot of different coverages. Um, and if they, you know, see how the game's going, if they let him play physical, you know, that, that's also something that he does well. And, you know, it's, uh, you know, sometimes when guys play physical, they just get caught up in, in just trying to push and shove. I think he has a, a great ability to uh, continue the route and, and continue to, to find the football and not just make it a wrestling match. It's, it's part of his route, um, it, you know, playing physical and, and the push-offs and, and everything else that he does. It's, um, you know, so we'll have, to, we'll have to be able to match that and, and defend it as legally as possible. Who else won't uh, Nick Petit won't practice. Uh, Traylon won't practice. Um, That'd probably be about it. How you doing? Good, how are you? Doing well. What kind of conversation did you and Ryan have after Mike made his decision and how'd that go? I mean, uh, just he's been really good throughout this whole process with keeping the relationship professional while at the same time, like helping me out how he can. But, uh, you know, yesterday at practice, like doing a good job of stepping in and letting me know that, uh, you know, the the reps even in the beginning of practice with the ones like, you know, I just, I didn't want to step over him, but he came to me first to be like, hey, this is you. So it was cool to hear that. Um, but I know that hasn't, this isn't going to change our relationship and how we go forward. What was the feeling, uh, your feeling, I guess, when, when Mike told you the news and, and anything changed for you as far as how you have approached things really over the last couple of weeks? No, no. I mean, uh, I mean, the news didn't change anything. It was cool to, to hear that. Um, and to you know see it become official, but it doesn't change really much how I'm approaching things. You talked, uh, I know your tattoos covered up, but how much does that kind of apply? That verse apply to pretty much your life since you got it. Yeah, I mean that's it's been my mantra since I can remember. It stemmed from my grandfather, and uh, it's just an easy thing for me to look to and just remind myself to, to never give up and to know that nothing in this life's ever going to come easy. And when you hit that bump in the road, to know that. That's an opportunity to get better, and um, just keeping a positive outlook about things. Uh, sometimes when I get down, it's a good way to kind of bring me back to base. Can you remind us what it says? Yes, uh, it's a verse that's close to me uh, because of the mantra, which is "Never give up," which is something my grandfather ended every single conversation I had with him. And I came across the verse uh, when I was in college, and it's Second Book of Chronicles, chapter fifteen, verse seven, which is "But as for you, be strong and do not give up, for your work will be rewarded." So um, it's definitely fitting, and. Uh, I, I really like it. How much? How would you self scout yourself over the first two starts to say what was good and what needed to be improved? Uh, I think first and foremost, just operationally, you know, getting in and out of the huddle, getting the call, uh, trying to eliminate all all those mistakes because those are the things that just set you up for failure from there on out. So, in that respect, I think I did a decent job. Just got to keep keep improving there. Um, just obviously decision making, some some throws here and there that you're gonna want to get back. That's gonna be uh, the case regardless of how long you're playing this league, but obviously with it being my first couple games, feeling out the, the plays that hopefully I can eliminate and, and turn into positive plays in the future. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm my hardest critic for sure. So uh, I'm definitely going to watch the tape and regardless of how I play, uh, come away thinking that I got to be a lot better than I am. So I feel like you got to have that mindset to keep improving in this league. With having watched the tape against Pittsburgh those last couple of drives, what did you take away? What were some of the specific lessons, positive or negative? Yeah, just um, just not trying to force things, even even in a situation where you got to make a play. You know, you got to understand and discern the level of risk that's um, appropriate for that time. So when you got to go down however many yards with a minute left, um, you know, you, you, sometimes you got to make a play. But sometimes that play that you're trying to make could be the play that loses the game. So it's just you know the give and take there, and uh, feeling that out, um, and you know that just comes with reps. With you being your own personal critic, as you say, you know you're known to be a perfectionist. How much do you have to remind yourself to be patient and understand that you're still a developing player? Yeah, I think it's just noticing what went wrong, the the mistakes that I made, and trying to eliminate them from happening again. Uh, 
understanding that it's okay to you know get frustrated, but it's it's important right in that second afterwards to get yourself back to neutral and, and move on. And then after the fact, when it's appropriate, to go and watch the film to learn as much as you can from it. Um, but you know, even even with good plays, like you you don't want to just focus on the outcome. You want to see what could have put yourself in a better position to even make it a better play. So um, we're all improving every day here, trying to see how we can get our offense, our team uh, better. Um, but we're also looking, you know, introspectively with how we can do better ourselves. How do you feel? How do you feel Mike Brabo has been with you, just as far as like the relationship, the, the bringing you along that whole process? Uh, he's been great. I mean, he's he demands a lot. He demands a lot from all of us, and uh, it doesn't matter if you're a rookie or a vet. Um, the standard is standard, and we're gonna go and uh, and work our tails off for him because of the way he approaches his um, preparation, and you know he demands a lot from us. So he he's. As hard critic as, as anybody, but I mean, um, I feel like him and I have developed a great relationship, and I feel comfortable, you know, with him. Small sample size, but what's gone into the connection with you and Kyle Phillips here just recently? Yeah, it's good to have him back. I mean, he's he was a little dinged up, and now to have him kind of fully back in the swing of things, we've always known he was a, he's a special player that we can incorporate into this offense. So just continuing to find ways to um, get him the ball, uh, however that may be. And uh, I, I definitely developed a, a lot of trust with him. I just imagine as, uh, I guess, it, when you first got here, maybe you deferred to Ryan or Malik, guys that have been here before. Is, do things change in that regard as far as your leadership, how you handle yourself, when to speak up? And what's that like for a, a guy who has players in the locker room that are significantly older than you? Yeah, it's tough because I've been in the position before where it's like, you want to be a leader in your own regard, but when you're not the starter, it's like you might you might just be a little more standoffish with how um, actively you are in your leadership role. So I'm always going to be a guy that's going to lead by example and just you know show uh, the standard through my actions. But I think when you do kind of transition into that starting role, uh, there's there becomes some more kind of freedom with how you interact with the guys and and um, co coaching the guys and just being more direct with it. So. Uh, I think the biggest thing for me was I didn't change who I was at practice from when I was, you know, th third string to to now, and I think that that helped me. And because I didn't have a huge shift in how I approach things, it made me more comfortable. But I'm definitely um, a little bit just more involved, and in, you know, in the meetings and just getting the guys involved with uh, what we're looking to get out of our offense. There's a line of thinking that sacks are kind of a quarterback stat. How do you feel about that? Uh, it's a team stat. I mean, everyone everyone's got a job to do. Uh, there's no way to peg a sack on whose fault it was um, unless you know exactly the ins and outs of what's going on with the offense, with the protection or anything. Uh, but, I mean, it, it's a team stat. It goes in the, in the team category, in, in my opinion. How much responsibility do you feel for, for helping out the offensive line on the occasions that, that somebody may? Yeah, a lot. I mean, uh, we, we, we preach to them that, you know, we, we trust that you guys know your assignments. We trust that you guys are going to pick up the guys. Uh, that you're supposed to, um, but you know, dudes get beat regardless of how good you are. So it's it's us letting them know that you know we're going to be smart with the ball. We're going to get the ball of our hands. That we're not going to be hanging on to it for too long, and just continuing to understand the situations that do um, require you to get the ball out a little earlier than others. What's the challenge you face on Sunday, and, and part of facing them is kind of the unknown, just what the pressures are going to look like, is how much they're going to come after you. Yeah, I mean it's uh it's interesting like. Um, they obviously uh, had it defensively like not not their best couple weeks the last couple weeks. So I mean they're going to play their stuff. They're going to do what they do. Or we're going to prepare to see what um, what we think we will. But you, you you question if you know that changes things for them if they want to change up their scheme or show some things that they haven't shown yet just to switch things up to try to get a little more success. But um, we're thinking about those things not too too much. We're really just focusing on our jobs and executing. Camp, you talk a lot about improving your touch on passes. Well, we saw that touch improve in the last couple of games. Well, what did you do to get better from that perspective? I think just reps. I think just even all the individual stuff, all the stuff I'm doing before practice and in between team team periods, uh, coaches putting us putting us in a good position to to make the throws that are going to be necessary in the games and tweaking and adjusting and feeling out the different types of throws that could be required for different uh, different plays. Um, but it's just been, I think, a product of preparation and just working at it. Now, look at some of the, the, the shots that you took, you know, in Pittsburgh. You, you took shots down the field, but there were times where guys underneath were open. Is mm -hmm. it tough to kind of like balance 
that desire to take that shot, but also what, what the tape is given to you? Yeah, I think sometimes um, based on a look or what we're trying to get out of the play, uh, you can kind of be locked into a certain route or a certain guy and going back and watching the tape and seeing seeing a guy pop open uh, somewhere that, where you weren't really thinking about going to the ball. Um, doesn't make you think like, dang, like I should have should have done this. It really just kind of affects the thought process for maybe the next week or if we do run a similar concept, where my eyes might want to start that time. So, um, and also developing trust with guys who we do see continuously win over and over and over again. So, um, I'm just, you know, trusting my coaching and trusting what I see with my eyes. But I definitely miss some things here to there. Try to eliminate that. How much do you? How much do you? I'd say just how he interacts with the guys in the, in the in the meeting rooms. It's impressive to see him talk about just what we're trying to get out of our receivers and even our offensive line, what we're doing with the offense. And his football knowledge is, is way beyond mine right now, and I'm trying to get to that point so where I can speak as confidently as he does in those meetings and to really just gain even more trust with the guys. How much does it help that you're able to lean on some veteran guys like Derek and D-Hop uh, in the huddle and out there on the field as you – make your way as a starter yeah i mean they're, they're going to do their thing uh, i I've, I've got confidence in them that, that gives me peace of mind you know for the for guys that have been doing it for a long time at a high level uh just gives me confidence and i feel like i've you know done a good job of just operating stuff as i had said but uh i think most most importantly i just want to make sure that the guys in the huddle believe in me and know that I, i'm on my stuff just like i know that they are uh because of the the reps and the games that they've all played in the past at the same Last time, well, being a quarterback that does take leadership, right? Uh, what kind of leader would you describe yourself as? I'd probably, I mean, I, like I said before, I'd definitely just a lead by example guy at first. Um, I think I'm pretty, uh, not relaxed, but reserved, I'd say, at most times. But I think it's important to show energy and to show emotion when, when it's necessary. And I think I do a good job of balancing that, whereas mm -hmm. Earlier in my career, I was a very emotional player, and I let that kind of get to me. Um, and I've done a good job of dialing it back, but still bringing it to the table when I feel like it's necessary. Ryan, you've been through so much in this uh, league. When you got hurt there in the Baltimore game, could you maybe feel the or see the writing on the wall with this uh, quarterback change coming? No, not not initially. Um, you know, as uh, as times kind of progress, I've you know, tried to walk through those emotions and and uh, prepare myself and just see the possibility. But uh, in in the initial moment, no. I know you're a competitor. You want to play. How, how, how did the news hit you? And maybe how do you approach things moving forward? Oh, well, it hits hard. I mean, never been in this situation before, so you know, it hits hard. Never a situation that anyone wants to be in. Um, but it's a situation I'm in, so got to walk through it. How do you think Will has done, and how how you support? Yeah, he's done some good things, obviously. Uh, came in and, and played really well the first game and you know, did, did some good things last game as well. So I'm um, going to be here to answer any questions he has and, and try to help him out along the way. How long prior to the team meeting did Mike inform you? Was it just before? Was it a couple of days? Just how long were you sitting on the information? Well, we had a conversation on Monday, so um, it was a little before. How, uh, how you feel physically, I guess, and, and how your mission is to try to get yourself in a position to play you if you're needed needed again? Yeah, not quite there yet. You know, getting closer. I'm uh, just trying to stay on top of, of everything I can do to, to keep progressing and, and getting better. Thing it, the thing is getting better. I'm um, just not quite ready yet. Do you want and need scout team reps or are you more content to, to kind of be behind Will during team stuff? Um, we'll figure that out as we go along. You know, right now my, my main focus is, is getting healthy. Again, being able to uh, so get back into practice, um, you know, do, do, do a little bit today, uh, try to see, uh, see how it feels doing some individual, but um, the main focus right now is, is just getting healthy. Yeah, I mean, I want to handle the, the situation with class, right? It's not a fun situation to be in, but uh, I want to be a pro and, and handle it with class and, um, you know, still be a guy that, that people can look to. So, um, you know, not an ideal situation, but, you know, I want to try to handle it well. In, in a situation like that, do you try to make a case for yourself or I guess a decision's made and, and you just have to, to live with it? 
Yeah, there's no, there's no making a case. Uh, you know, you can disagree, disagree with the situation, but um, yeah, you're not gonna, you know, plead your case. That's, it's not the, uh, the way it works. Will mentioned uh, it's like a rep that you said to you, Will. I guess you know what he said. You, you were about to take a rep, or then you said, Will, that you, you know, I'm talking about here. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, pre practice. Yeah, it was yesterday. Okay. Talk us through that. Yeah, I just we were uh, getting ready to do do some drills, and um, you know, Will was kind of standing back, and um, you know, I, I told him to get in there. It's, it's his opportunity to uh, to take the lead in the drills and and uh, start owning the position. So um, that's the role I'm in now. I just try to support him and, and help him find you know his footing as he as he steps into this role. Do you think that the the Cincinnati game? has too much prominence when people look at, at your overall work as the starting quarterback in the Titans? Uh, last time we played them, we beat them, so I'm not sure. Um, I don't know. That's up to someone else to decide, you know. Um, feel like, uh, you know, I feel like I did a lot of good things for this organization and, and uh, Kind of turned things around for for a good period of time and won a lot of football games. So, um, you know, it wasn't perfect, never is perfect, but uh, hopefully people can look back and and see the good that things that I did and and how I, you know, helped this city, helped this organization, and and helped turn things around. Thank you, Thank you.